Good morning. Our next project is called Doodled Flowers. Um, and this is a sample of what yours might look like. Or yours might look a little bit different and that's okay. Um, so to start out with, to make doodled flowers, this looks kind of complicated, it looks kind of hard, but when you follow step-by-step -step directions, it's actually pretty easy. And I had a lot of fun doing this. It was kind of relaxing. So I hope you feel the same way. Um, so to get started, you're gonna need Sharpies. And you want Sharpies because they're permanent, um, because we will be getting some water involved with this. Um, you're gonna want Sharpies, and then you're gonna need your markers, Crayola markers, just your regular old markers. Um, and a tiny little paintbrush. And I realize you might not have a tiny little paintbrush at your house, um, but what you could use is a Q-tip. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, so that and just a little, that's my paint water, cup of water. So to get started, you'll need some plain paper and you want a few pieces of plain paper, not just one because look at what happened behind my other one. So we always want to protect our table underneath. Um, so grab some plain paper, three to five pieces. I like to have it so it's nice and soft, not working on the hard table. Um, but that's up to you. You're also gonna get directions um, in a PDF and this picture will be in there and then there's two pages of step-by-step -step directions that takes you through nice and easy. So the first direction tells you, you can have your paper um, vertical or horizontal, totally up to you. Um, whatever you decide, This you're the artist with this one. And then I did this one, this direction. So I'll keep going that direction. So you want to think about your paper in half. If you want to take a pencil and just put little dash marks, you can. Um, you don't have to. You just want to go ahead and when you add your circles for the flowers, you want it to be in the top section. They might go a little bit lower than half. That's okay. But we want to leave some room for our leaves at the bottom. So notice these are pretty much on the top. Um, but they do go a little bit more than halfway. That's okay. So you're going to add circles now. It says here, add circles in circles to the top half of your paper using a black Sharpie. Um, these are very free-handed. Yours can be very free-handed, or you can go ahead and find round objects to trace in your house if you want to, if you want them to look perfect. That's totally up to you. Um, but you want to have a circle and a circle, and then you want to make one of your circles thicker than the other one. The inside could be thicker, the outside could be thicker, totally up to you. Um, but when you vary those line weights, it makes it look more interesting. Um, I have one, two, three, four, I have five on here. You should have at least five on your picture. And you could definitely have more. You can have some bigger ones and smaller ones than what I have here. Um, vary it and then the other thing do you notice how some of mine go off the edge of the paper that always is kind of interesting to do too um, so that's something you may want to do you might not want to and you don't have to totally up to you but think about it so once you've got your circles on your paper you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna draw flower shapes inside and you want to make each one different. Now these aren't your typical flower shapes. This one looks like a gear. Um, that looks, to me, that looks like an eyeball. And this is swirly. There's a flower. This one's sort of a snowflakey kind of thing. They're all different. Make yours different. Although once you get more than five or six, you can repeat them if you want to. It's totally up to you. But make up your own. You can copy these. Be creative. Have fun with it. And then when we go to step four, after you've drawn the inside of your flowers, you're going to add borders to the outside of your flowers. And again, you can do all kinds of different things. You can kind of repeat what was inside on the outside, or you can do something different. Um, this is what mine looked like. So I had these, to me those look like little beads. And that reminds me of like a dandelion when it has the seeds on there. Um, and we've got those little gear shapes. but. We're doing that on the outside now in Sharpie. So it's pretty. And once you've done that, this might take you a little bit of time. 
Um, but once you get to that point, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to add stems and leaves. Um, so your stems, they should be made of two lines. And really big flowers need a thick stem. And your thinner flowers maybe need a thinner one, but you want to have two lines for it. And they can curve. If you look at flowers outside, sometimes on a bush or whatever, they're not all standing straight up. Sometimes they're curvy. And then we want to add leaves and stems. And that is right here. And think about your your leaves as a, a football shape. They look like little footballs. And the leaves at the bottom of the page are going to be the ones that would be in the front. So consider the foreground. And then the ones behind are behind. And so they overlap. So maybe draw some of your front ones first. And then the ones from behind come out. And I kind of made a sample here on the sheet too. So they pop up from behind so you can kind of see that. And then there's actually a little bit of grass here, a little bit of zigzags for grass and a little bit of lines for the ground. You can add that or you don't have to. And uh, once you've done all that, you want to go back with your Sharpie and go ahead and thicken some of the lines. Some of the lines on the leaves are thicker than others. And I did that too because sometimes my lines weren't exactly straight or a little bumpy and I wanted to smooth them out so I just made them a little bigger. And um, lastly, you want to fill it in with your markers. When you fill it in with your markers, here I'm going to draw a little shape really quick. Let's say I've got my flower with another line inside and I've got this in there. And okay, I'm trying to do this really fast because we are on the camera here. I don't want to bore you to death. Um, I'm not even going to finish it. But when you color with the markers, you don't have to fill it in all the way. Maybe fill it in so you're leaving some of the white space on there. Because then when we go back with the brush and the water, we're going to get some different colors. Did you know you can make watercolor paint out of markers? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but um, it's really kind of cool. So I'm going to fill it in, but I'm going to leave some of it white. And maybe add that. I'm going to put a little purple in there too. That will be pretty. And go like that. So you don't even have the color super neat. So that's kind of nice. And then I'm going to take my brush and add some water. And I'm going to paint in there. Swirl it a little bit and it makes some of it, makes it into a watercolor. So now I'm starting to get a pink, but it looks like I've got two colors of pink. And so it looks, makes those little round things look 3D. Isn't that neat? And I'm going to clean my brush off before I go to another marker color. And I'm just going to go around this yellow section. And some of this might not blend at first, but as it's drying, it will kind of bleed out into that area. Actually, it's kind of hard to see on the camera. Uh, and I'm going to go in this purple area. Get my, you can see, I think you can see the purple doing it too. You do have to push the brush in there a little bit. You don't want to do it too much, though, so that it rips your paper. If you sit here for a few minutes, your paper will start getting fuzzy. You don't really want that. Um, but that's how easy it is. And then, oh, I didn't do my blue. Let me do the blue. OK, if you don't have markers at home, Feel free to just use color pencils and fill it in. That's okay. You don't have to do the watercolor thing. Or maybe somebody's got watercolors at home and you want to use your watercolors. Or maybe you've got watercolor pencils. I don't know if any of you have those. Um, those are kind of the same idea. You color with your water, or your color pencil, and then use water, and it'll blend like that. So that's as easy as as it is. Um, for you guys out there, you might be thinking, oh, I'm a boy, I don't want to be doing a bunch of flowers. Um, you know what? Mother's Day is coming up. This would be a really nice gift for 
your mom or your grandma or your aunt or your sister or some special female in your life. Um, so, or you may be into gaming and you have the symbols. I know some of you kids draw the symbols. Maybe you want to change this up a little bit and make it a little bit more abstract and maybe not flowers, but something like that. If you're into that, I'm okay with that. I would love to see what you can make out of this. So have fun with this, guys, and have a great day.